TJ Prindle uh, Prydell is an account manager for Reference Solutions on behalf of New England Libraries, government agencies, and the SMB community. Our key focus this evening will be how small business owners and executives can leverage Reference Solutions business and consumer information for better mar your marketing, sales, and research needs. TJ assists public libraries in contributing to local economic development through SMB and key partner consultants, as well as programming initi initiatives such as tonight's event. So. Everybody welcome, TJ. Hi, well, thank you. Um, it, it's good to be here. So a um, little bit of background about myself. So uh, my name is TJ Prydell and I am the New England State's Account Manager for Reference Solutions. Um, so I act as a consultant to the small business community, uh, an account manager to the library system and also consultant to our local government agencies on how they can better leverage the data that's embedded in reference solutions uh, for marketing purposes, for local economic development, and for research purposes, uh, and as well for job seekers too. So if you're looking for a job, you can utilize our resource to find gainful employment. Um, so we'll be talking about those initiatives today. Um, before I get into that, I'll give you a little bit of background information about who reference solutions is, why our data is important, and how you might be able to utilize it for your own needs. Um, so Reference Solutions, we did actually go through a recent rebranding. Uh, you might have recognized us through our previous name, Reference USA. Um, and uh, that, that change went through September of 2020. Uh, we started up as a company uh, back in 1972. And back then we were just a, it was just one guy collecting phone books. That was it. So he wasn't a, a crazy person. He did have a good use for that. Um, he would distribute names, addresses, and phone numbers to businesses that needed sales leads. Uh, so we have the most boring library in the United States. It's got 4,400 phone books in it. So we do still collect the phone books. Um, first and foremost, we're data compilers. So we get white pages, yellow pages, government blue pages, and then we'll do data entry on names, addresses, and phone numbers. We'll embed them into our data, database. And then on the business side, we compile from thousands of different public sources to collect information on a business industry, uh, key contacts that might work at the business, uh, their uh, sales volume, employee size, uh, their phone number, their, their address, et cetera. And then all those data points become searchable to you as the user. So if you own you know, if you're selling a certain type of product or service, you can identify the types of businesses or consumers most likely to buy your products and services. So you can generate sales leads, uh, do market research on competitors, or identify, you know, your vertical market that's unique to yourself. Uh, one of the things that we do in addition to compiling from the public sources that keeps our information accurate and unique to some of our other competitors is that we have a call center in Omaha, Nebraska. It employs 350 people and we call the businesses in our database every single year. So every single year we're making about 25 million phone calls um, to verify and maintain uh, the business records in our database. Um, so that's a quality assurance process for us after we've already collected the info um, via our public sources. And then we make it available to you through the reference solutions platform. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, so right now you guys should be able to see the reference solutions home page. Oops. Um, and then before we dive into this, um, so I'll, I'll navigate through the home page so you guys know what you're looking at. Um, as long as you are a patron of the James Blackstone Memorial Library, you can get access to the Reference Solutions platform free of charge. All you need to do is go to the James Blackstone Memorial Library website, find where they host the link to Reference Solutions. When you click that link, it'll prompt you to enter in your library card number and then you'll be on this homepage here. Um, at the very top of our screen, we do have our webinar portal. Uh, we run bi-weekly webinars. There's a training for library staff members. Um, technically, you don't need to be a library staff member to attend, so it, I think it's a good overview of our database. So if you ever want to follow up training on after this session, um, feel free to attend one of our webinars. 
Additionally, we do job seeker programs, um, business growth webinars, such as the one that we're doing tonight. And then there's a search essentials course, which teaches you some of the basics of how to run a search. We also have our learning center. So if you're a little bit more introverted and you don't wanna to talk to one of our live trainers, that's fine. Uh, we do have slide shares and PDFs on how to um, you know, run different searches in the database. If you scroll to the very bottom of our database, you'll see our 1-800 line and our email address. Uh, so if you do have any questions, feel free to call this number. Uh, that routes directly to me or one of the other 20 account managers in our department. Um, so I talk to patrons on a daily basis. So if you guys have any questions that you wanted to um, you know, ask of us directly, feel free to call us anytime and I'm happy to uh, chat more with you know, why you might be using our database and how you could use it um, you know, to better your, your business needs. Okay, so um, we have a small group tonight. Um, so because of that, I kind of wanted to open it up for questions as to why you wanted to look into the reference solutions database a little bit further. Um, if you're, you own your own business or if you work for a company and you just thought that our database might be able to help, uh, I can use your use case as an example um, you know, throughout our search. Um, and I can kind of show you how it might be able to benefit you specifically. Um, if you don't want to share, that's fine. Um, I can just kind of go through the generals, uh, generally speaking, how one might be, use our database. But uh, we got a couple participants here. So if you are interested in sharing, um, go ahead and unmute yourself now and, and um, you know, share a little bit more about what brought you here today. I'm actually seeing a couple things in the chat box I didn't see before, so. I see you're uh, unmuted, Greg. Did, um, did you wanna share you know, what, what brought you here tonight? Yeah, I heard about USA Leads like 10, 15 years ago, and I actually had the CDs, I purchased them. So that's how far back I, I go. And so right now I do motivational speaking. I do workshops for companies and I do have a lot of leads, but a friend of mine told me about, oh, this must have been like three or four years ago. She mentioned the Avon library and she told me information on how to go and click and get involved with it. And it just sounded familiar when I heard about this tonight, it sounded like the same sort of thing. I guess the big question I have on my mind is this, and it, it's kind of selfish, but I have to ask, I live in Litchfield, Connecticut. So would I be able to access this if I got a library card through Blackstone or that's not possible or what's my options? Uh, well, I guess the uh, rubric really is you have to reside or work in the community in which the library subscribes to reference solutions in order to get access. I might okay. leave that question for Jenna, um, however, because I don't know what the, uh, you know, who they open up library cards to. So. Okay. Got a better answer, Jenna. I'll, I'll leave that to you. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, I know I can access it from any computer in the in the library without an issue. So it, it might be based on the, the IP address. Um, but I can I can look into it. I know a lot of libraries subscribe to Reference USA or um, Reference Solutions now. Um, so you might your library might have access, and you might check with them too. Okay. All right. And would it be okay if I reached out to you tomorrow? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I've got, you know, a, a kind of a decent idea of how you might utilize our resource based on, um, you know, what you've said thus far, but was there anything further that you wanted to add? No, really it's just reaching out to businesses, but you know, I do library presentations. I did a lot in 2018 and now I'm doing more corporate but when I book a library in Massachusetts or Connecticut and I'm speaking at six or seven o'clock at night at a library, I would love to see, okay, where are the businesses around that library? You know, the library will pay me maybe $200, $250 to speak. But if I can find a business within an hour of that library, boy, that would be a gold mine. And then I could do a lunch presentation for that business. And then that evening I could do a presentation at the library. So that's
you kind of cut off there, but I think I kind of got the gist of what you're saying. So that was actually one of my biggest challenges um, back when, before, before COVID hit for my job, I used to travel uh, every single month and I would fly out to a new state every month and I would try and book, you know, 15 meetings in a week. Um, and the biggest challenge was getting libraries within a close proximity to one another to agree to set meetings. Um, so keeping my drive times, you know, uh, it, it is a challenge. So that is a good way that you could use the database is to identify businesses in a close proximity to maybe a speaking event that you already have arranged. Uh, and I can show you how to do that, sir. All right, so I see another attendee and, and I assume this is your business name. I see this queen meal preps and I can make a, a guess as to what you do. But uh, if you're open to sharing, I'll, I'll let you do that. Um, otherwise, I'll move into the business database. Hi, yes. Um, I'm in the process of opening a, a meal prep business in a very unconditional, unconvention sorry, unconventional way. Um, I'm going more as a consultant rather than cooking. So I would come to your family's home and we would sit and do a consultation. And after we get through that consultation, I would actually assist you guys in creating uh, healthy, health meal preps and snacks and such for your family for anywhere from two weeks to a month because I actually detest cooking uh, every week. I hate meal prep Sunday. How about <laughs> meal prep every other Sunday? <laughs> so yeah, that's the gist of uh, what I'm doing. So uh, in everything that I'm doing, uh, like currently, I just finished my lead page uh, giveaway, which is a short four-step book of getting someone started if you don't know how to do it. Um, right now, I'm, I'm finishing my consultation um, uh, workbooks for when I come to your home. And then I'm also working on my book itself. So oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> busy, busy busy yeah yeah okay well thanks for sharing um so i've got a couple ideas in my mind and and i will bring these up as we go along and look through the database uh okay. how you guys might use the database for your use cases um but if you have any questions as i go through it feel free to chime in at any time just unmute your mic and ask questions as you have them Okay. Uh, and I see one more person with us. So if, if you're interested in sharing what brought you to this event tonight, um, you know, feel free to unmute your mic and, and share. Otherwise, no big deal. And I can kind of move through the platform at this point. Okay. So we are looking at the home screen of reference solutions. You'll see we have 10 different available databases. Um, U.S. business, these are all businesses in the United States. Canadian business, so all Canadian businesses. We have a new business database. These are businesses that have just opened in the past two years. Now, all the businesses that are in this database are also in the U.S. business database. We just isolated this into a separate module so it's easier to establish, um, you know, contact businesses that just open their doors. Uh, we have white pages application. So uh, if you're looking for people listed in the white pages in the US or Canada, uh, you can search for people by their name, address, phone number, estimated household value and home income. Uh, we have a historical business database. So these are businesses dating back to 1997. This is a more advanced component. Uh, if you're doing market research on an industry, if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking about opening a business for the first time, you can research an address, see what businesses existed there in the past, see what the open and close rate was, you know, if there's businesses established in that address, uh, and you see every two, three years they've closed, they've opened and then they've closed down. Um, you know, maybe that's not a good sign for leasing space, or maybe there's a history of successful businesses in its past, you know, so you can look at addresses or industry trends uh, in certain geographic areas. U.S. Jobs and Internships is, uh, we've got a partnership with Indeed.com. Um, so any and all uh, job listings will be in this module. And then there's additional third-party resources that we provide through there, like resume writing, aptitude testing, salary estimates for certain types of jobs. Um, so it's for all your job needs, basically, it's in here. There's linkage back to the U.S. Business Database. If you want to research a company before you go in for an interview, you could do that. Our healthcare database has um, specialty information on doctors, dentists, physicians, and surgeons, 
All the information is compiled through the American Medical Association. Um, so we'll share information like, um, you know, does that doctor accept brand new patients? Do they accept Medicare, Medicaid? How many prescriptions do they give out per week? What type of specialty uh, do they practice? Are they board certified? That kind of stuff. So if you're looking for, so I mean, in addition to business needs, you can use reference solutions for your own personal needs too. If you're not necessarily in the healthcare industry and you're just looking for a local dentist or um, you know doctor by their uh, specialty and practice, you can search through this healthcare database here. U.S. Consumers and Lifestyles is a look at individual consumers and households, hobbies, lifestyle interests, and purchasing behaviors. So if your business sells direct to the household level, business to consumer, you could use this to generate leads for yourself um, and then produce a list that you might use for marketing and outreach. Um, so for the meal prep idea, uh, this would be great uh, to be using that for. So if you're going direct to household, uh, you can identify households based on their purchasing behaviors. Uh, and then you can get statistics on demographics too. So if you have a good understanding of uh, who you typically consult with, either based on their demographics, their household income, or certain neighborhoods, that kind of thing. Uh, you can generate lists of individuals and households in this database. New Movers and Homeowners is looking at uh, consumers or residents who have just moved into the community. Um, we have a you know, so we get information from USPS. You fill out that national change of address um, postcard will we'll know you moved from point A to point B, from how far away you moved, and then how recently you moved in. Uh, this is updated weekly, so we'll know people who moved in uh, within a week ago all the way back to one year ago. Um, so with all that said, I'm going to start in the U.S. business database, and then I'm going to go into the consumer and lifestyle module. Those are our two most used databases. So from a business standpoint, you're either doing, you know, business to business outreach and sales or business to consumer outreach and sales. All the modules are gonna look the same. So the only difference is gonna be the data that you yield from it. So you'll see a quick search feature and an advanced search feature. Quick search, if you're researching an individual company, you're gonna be using this uh, tab here. So um, example might, so like, let's look up the record for Stanley Black and Decker. So you just type in the name of a company. Um, you can give it as much or as little detail as you want. So if you just type in the name of the company uh, and then hit search, you're gonna look for all companies in the United States. So you've got a listing of every Stanley Black & Decker in the United States. So get company name, CEO or owner, or um, you know, general manager of that location, address, phone number. On the right-hand side, you'll see a corporate tree icon and then there's um, an up arrow or a down arrow. So the up arrow, or I guess both arrows represent corporate linkage. So up arrow states that they are owned by somebody else or somebody above them. Down arrow means that's the corporate site and they own entities underneath them. So we'll see that this is the corporate site based on that arrow. But if you click on any of these corporate trees, any of these corporate tree icons, you can see the hierarchy of who owns who. At the very top, you'll see Stanley Black & Decker is a publicly traded company. Here are their branches, subsidiaries, and then every branch and subsidiary they own across the United States. Um, we'll share what industry they affiliate with. So they're a hardware manufacturer in New Britain, Connecticut. Here's how many people they employ nationwide, what they make in sales revenue across the board. Each branch level detail will share the number of employees and sales they make at that on-site location. Uh, once you click on a company record, it will take you to their detailed profile. So this is all the information we know about one company. There are 16 million verified business records in the US business database. So there's a lot of information at your fingertips. Uh, in addition to the public, publicly traded companies, we do also have private companies in here as well. So the smallest mom and pop shops you know, down to just one employee. So the very top is gonna to be the most popular information. Um, and then keep in mind how you might use this data for yourself. Most people are using it to generate leads uh, so that they can, you know, pick up the, the phone and do a cold call and introduce themselves and, and, you know, make their pitch. 
Um, people will also use it for direct mail campaigns uh, or market research. So we'll see that Stanley Black & Decker is a verified record. What that means is that our call center established contact with that company and talked to an executive and verified the information to be true and accurate. Um, so these are more higher quality data records. All of your searches will default to verified only, but if you wanna see unverified records, you can too. Uh, I don't like unverified because we still verify it through the public sourcing like Secretary of State filings, Better Business Bureau listings, Utility Connects, Disconnects, um, but we just weren't able to establish contact by phone. Not a lot of people know who we are. So, you know, we'll call, we'll go through and they're like, why are you asking me such personal questions? We get hangups, we get voicemails, that kind of thing. Um, but for the verified records, you'll see the information is more trustworthy. So we'll have address, phone number, website, social media feeds, job listings. So if Indeed has a job listing for that onsite location, it'll automatically publish here. Industry profile. Uh, we'll have the SIC code, that's their standard industrial classification, and their NAICS code, North American Industrial Classification System. You do not have to be an expert on any of these codes. Um, just know that these codes will classify them as a specific industry. So this just states they're a hardware manufacturer, and that's their primary function. And then here's their secondary industry codes. Uh, unfortunately for me, when I started working for uh, Data Axle was info group at the time. They made me memorize a lot of these codes. Uh, and I quickly found out that I really didn't need to do that. So I have, I have a lot of useless knowledge in my head, but um, not even a fun fact, but uh, yeah. So you do not need to memorize the codes by any means. Uh, just know that they'll help you guide your search. The business profile is just a small blurb about the company, who they are, why they're important, what kind of products they sell. Usually we just pull this straight from the company website. Google Maps will have their location. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but we actually power Google Maps address points. So if you've ever used Google Maps to get you from point A to point B, you're actually getting your addresses from us. We power 90% of the in-car navigation systems like TomTom, Tom, OnStar, and Garmin. Um, if you ever go to, so let's say you're at Google, type in, James Blackstone Memorial Library. That information you're used to seeing on the right-hand side, we actually provide to Google. So company description, address, hours of operation, phone number, link to their website, et cetera. Um, so why it's important to be listed in the Reference Solutions database, um, you're gonna get exposure on the search engines. We share all of our information with Google, Yahoo, AOL, MSN, and Bing. Um, so we've got an API resource that streams our data directly to those platforms. Okay. Uh, demographic section, will share how many people they employ, what their sales volume is, so some of the details behind the uh, entity. The management directory will be top level executives at the company. So if you are using this to cold call, these are gonna be the top level executives. You'll have their name, title, gender, and ethnicity of the individual. If um, you know, you're selling finance software, uh, you're gonna find an, a finance executive, a CFO, and ask for that individual directly. When you pick up the phone and call, you are gonna be going through a gatekeeper. So essentially that's the main directory's phone number. Um, so you'll have to ask around to the individual. Uh, larger the company, the harder it is going to be to uh, talk to the CEO, but you know, so keep that in mind. But we do have top level executive listings. This one's a very full profile. Okay. Um, company news. If Stanley Black & Decker is mentioned in any news source, um, it'll automatically publish here. Uh, this is run by Bing, so Bing determines which news sources publish here. Um, so they've got a short list of, I guess, what they deem trusted news sources, and then if Stanley Black & Decker's name is mentioned in any of those articles, it'll automatically publish here. So if you're researching a company, this is a good way to get a better understanding of what's going on currently. 
basic stock data. So if they're listed on the New York Stock Exchange, there's a simple Google Finance link. You can click here, see how they're doing in the stock market. We've got their 10K filings. Qualifying leads, get a better understanding of where their expenses are. So how much is this business spending in certain ventures? A lot of financial data is going to be estimated, so keep that in mind. Um, private companies especially. Public companies, they do have to legally disclose their sales revenue information. Private companies don't. Uh, for private companies, we do have an economic model that we make to estimate the figures that they make in their sales, uh, as well as their expenditures. Um, and this is actually how I started using the database. Uh, a little over six years ago, I, I Honestly, I got my library card just so I could use, it was Reference USA at the time. And I had a background in business development and outside sales. I used the database to showcase my ability to qualify leads for a company. Um, and then I, I went into my job interviews, I printed out Reference USA records, and then I showed them, if you hire me, I'm gonna target all the businesses that have high expenditures in the industry you affiliate with, I have less than 10 employees, maybe you can you know, assist the, the smaller businesses of the community in reducing their, co their costs and becoming a supplier for them. So that's one outlook on that. UCC filings, these are uniform commercial codes. So you'll see their source filing ID, the state in which they filed in. So this will show you where their assets are. Nearby businesses are their neighbors, so simply businesses right next door. There's a small competitors report. If you own your own business, I highly encourage you to get a better understanding of who your competitors are. This is a very simple way to identify them. So look up your own business record, look through the competitors report. Competitors report is gonna populate businesses with a similar business industry in a close geographic region. If you wanna do a full competitive analysis, you're gonna to wanna to run an advanced search, search for that industry you associate with, and then look in the geographic area that your sales territory is in. And then I'll go into that here uh, right after this, uh, how you might you know, run a search for a specific city, county, zip code, et cetera, in a certain industry. Historically speaking, if you wanna see how company structure has changed over time, we'll show you by their sales and employee size, uh, how they've changed over the past 20 years. Uh, the historical report will show you very simple changes. Were there any company name changes, address changes, CEO changes, um, or changes in their contact info? Okay, so that is a detailed record. I wanted to take you through that very first before we do specific examples so that you can kind of understand the data that's embedded in each business record. Um, so when you are going through our database, generating lists for sales leads or doing market research, uh, you know which data points that you can search by and which ones you can use to leverage your uh, opportunities. All right. Uh, one more thing I'd like to point out before we move on to an advanced search is this data feedback button. So if you find, let's say, your own business record in the database and you want to update some data points in there, you can simply click data feedback. You can update your phone number, your address, your website, your company description, hours of operations, whatever you want. Um, and then we do share that information with the online search engines. That is something to keep in mind. It is good to have up-to-date information and a resource. It's not like old school Wikipedia. You know, We do have researchers that will verify your claims. So somebody might get in contact with you and you might have to verify you are the business owner. Um, you know, and, and, I guess a, a legal regard, um, you know, so you can't just throw information in there and we'll automatically change it. Oh, you know, like um, meal prep, a fortune 500 company making over, over a billion dollars in sales. You know, we won't take whatever information you want to tell us, but um, we'll, we'll verify it with you first. So maybe in the future, but okay. So new search. Um, before I move on, were there any questions about the detailed record? Um, and some of the data points in, in there, um, and then I'll move into the advanced search. I'm no. trying to multi, oh, go ahead. No, no questions, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm trying to multitask. I saw the chat box blinking on my screen. Um, 
So I'm, I'm kind of lagging on the chat box, but if you do have questions, I encourage you to just unmute yourself and ask. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll look at the chat box when I can, but I'm a little slow on that. Okay, so I'll assume we're good there. Uh, I assume there might be questions on the advanced search component. This is how most people are gonna be using the database anyway. So this is how you're gonna generate a target market that's relevant to your own specific business interests. Um, so Greg, you had said that you're a motivational speaker. You'll go out to either businesses or libraries and um, you know speak on different topics. So, I mean, I'm not actually sure what type or how you might qualify a certain industry. So if you wanna talk about that, I'll let you. Um, maybe it's by the uh, employee size, maybe you're looking for larger organizations uh, that can set up a bigger speaking opportunity for you. Uh, obviously, it seems like you've had some success with libraries, um, so that might be a good starting point there too. Uh, but everything you see on the left-hand side are all data elements you can apply to your target market. So the more things you check off, the smaller and more defined that market's going to be. Essentially, the warmer your sales leads will be. With any business, my first recommendation is to identify your vertical market. So who do you do best with? If you've identified a trend, um, you know, oh, hey, I've been doing well with libraries. Um, I have created a reputation for myself in that industry. Um, you know, People talk around, maybe I can continue generating business with libraries. Um, I've also been doing well in you know, this industry or businesses with this size. My first recommendation is, if, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, continue doing what works for you. So uh, identify your vertical market based on the firmographic details you see on the left-hand side. I'll start out very simply. So uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see geography. You can get as specific as you want to. You can search by city, by state, by zip code, by county. You can even open up Google Maps and draw a very specific shape of where you're looking for particular businesses. Okay, um, so we'll start in the state of Connecticut. So check mark city slash state. Now we're looking for a specific state. I click on Connecticut. We're looking for all businesses in Connecticut. Um, if you want to get more specific than that, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, you could even open up, let's do a map-based search. And we're going to open up a map. And this is a little bit more advanced. Like you can type in the city, you can type in the county, um, do multiple counties, multiple cities. That's, that's entirely up to you. Now let's zoom in. You can zoom in on an address point. Um, now, Greg, I'll use you as an example. Let's say you had a speaking session at the James Blackstone Memorial Library. So we're going to zoom in on the library. Now, I've just typed in the name of the, um, you know, the business, the name of the library. Um, it's probably better for certain companies to type in their address, but um, I think James Blackstone Memorial Library is the only one in the United States. So we're, we can just type that in and hit go. So we'll zoom in on the library. Now, if you're trying to identify businesses in the area, this would be a good way of doing it. Um, so you can zoom in or zoom out as far as you want to. So here's where you're hosting your business, uh, your speaking session. <clears throat> now you can click define radius. So if you click and drag the mouse, say you wanted to find all businesses within a three mile radius of the library. And I might even go farther than that. Um, so let's zoom out. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. I'm gonna delete this shape. I'm gonna do it again. So define radius is just click and drag the mouse. You can also draw a shape. So that's, you, you can choose what shape you wanna make and you're looking for all businesses within this shape. And then I double click and I've completed the shape. Uh, but I'm going to define radius, click and drag, and we'll see the little pointer says five miles, and I'm going to stop it there. And then that number says there's 4,043 businesses in a five mile radius from the library. <clears throat> Hopefully you don't have to swim to find any of them. 
All right, so we're going to click done. And we've generated a list right now. Once you click view results, you'll see all of those businesses. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, if you want to get a little bit more specific, you can overlay it with more data points. So let's say you're only interested in some of the larger companies based on their employee size. Uh, so we'll select off on all companies employing over 100 people. So I've clicked on all of the ranges starting from 100 and going up to 10,000 plus. And then I'll click update count. So there's 42. So this might actually be uh, the perfect list to start with. Um, one other thing I might recommend is, you know, if you know the key decision maker based on their title, you can also overlay that with their title. Um, so for speaking arrangements, I assume that would probably be an HR executive or a chief administrative officer who would decide that kind of thing. Um, so you can choose those titles and then we will only show you businesses that have an HR executive name available for you or chief administrative officer. Okay, so now it's narrowed down to even like 11. Um, so that's a pretty short list. So we'll view results and we'll get the 11 companies employing over a hundred people that have a HR executive or chief administrative officer name available. And then you get a list of the companies, um, names of those individuals, address, phone number. Now I'm gonna revise my search. Um, I think that's, you know, that's fairly small. Um, and I'll get rid of the title. So let's say we're just interested in all of those businesses, regardless of the executive that we have on file. So we'll look at the 42. All right, so from here, if you wanted, you could extract this information into an Excel file. <clears throat> so check mark the left of company name, if you click here, check mark the records that you actually want to extract. Come up to the top, click download. So you can export this information into Excel, choose the level of detail you wanna see. So summary, detailed or custom. Summary usually gives you enough information like name, address, phone number, um, business industry, sales volume, employee size, the basics. Detailed will give you everything we have I actually like doing detailed. It, it gives you kind of a messy file, but you can clean it up afterward. And then download records. Now the benefit of doing this, if you are planning a marketing campaign, um, oh, so if, okay. I believe I'm sharing my browser. So I'm gonna have to change what I'm sharing so you can see this. Okay, so now we're looking at the spreadsheet. And if we're not, let me know. Um, so all the information we saw for the Stanley Black & Decker record is now condensed into a spreadsheet for all of those businesses employing over 100 people within a five mile radius from the library. Uh, you'll see company name, executive names, addresses, phone numbers. So you might use this for a call list. Uh, this file format, is universally compatible with all CRM software. So if you are using Salesforce or HubSpot, you can upload this document into there and it'll automatically generate a pipeline for you that you can use for your outreach. It is also compatible with mail merge. Another popular way of using our data is to generate uh, direct mail uh, marketing campaigns. So if you want to create a postcard, a flyer, a brochure, um, this would be an easy way of doing it. So this, this is compatible with that. Microsoft Word has mail merge. So I'm sure there's a simple HTML design, um, you know, solution on the web that you could probably even use for free. Upload it onto Microsoft Word, click the mail merge um, tab, and then upload the spreadsheet into there and it'll automatically create the correct size and template um, Go to a nice printer, print out your mail piece, and then get them in the mail um, to let people know about your business. And actually for that meal prep uh, a business that you run, th that would be my recommendation for you if you've got the capital to run a mail campaign. So depending on the large audience um, that you're gonna be sending out a mail piece to, uh, it, you're probably gonna be looking at like 50 cents a postcard. Um, 
So depending on how you want to run your outreach and marketing methods, um, this would be one that you could do uh, depending on the demographic of the consumer or like we're looking at now, the firmographics of the business. Thank you. And I'll actually, I'll get into that a little bit more when we go into the consumer module, but I did wanna let you know uh, before we do dove into that, that that might be a good way that you can market to uh, individuals looking to, uh, I guess, become a little bit more healthy or uh, maybe save time on the, on the cooking front. I, I know I could probably use your service. <laughs> All right. Um, so now I'm gonna switch my share back to the database. Okay, so um, I'll get into the chat box. So I said, um, what about emails? Okay, so we do have email addresses, but they're not available in the database. Uh, so there's a catch with those, uh, we sell them. Um, so if you did ever need email addresses to run an email marketing campaign uh, and you've got capital to spend for that kind of thing, uh, <clears throat> email us or call us and then we can um, you know, sell you email addresses to do the campaign yourself, or you can consult with our email marketing consultants on delivering an email campaign uh, through our platform. So up to you. All right, I'm gonna do a new search and I'm gonna stay in the business database for one more search, uh, cause I wanna show you guys how you can do market research. I'm gonna run a very simple search and we're just looking for businesses in Brantford and North Brantford. Let's do it. I've only been to Brantford a couple of times, so I don't know it too well, but I assume North Brantford is uh, north of Brantford. So it's probably real close by. So we'll look at all businesses in Brantford and North Brantford. Now I'll scroll down and on the left, we'll see special selects and I'll select professionals all slash one. Now I'm going to click this and this is getting a little bit more advanced, but what we're doing, uh, any doctor, physician, lawyer, insurance agent, um, technically they have to file for their own business license. Uh, so uh, if we click one professional per business, instead of getting, um, you know, 10 lawyers at a law firm, you'll get just the law firm. So if we're doing market research, I think this is a better way to get a better understanding of what businesses are in the area. So we'll get about 2,200 businesses in Brantford. <clears throat> and then if you wanna know a little bit more about them, simply come up here to the top and click on the charts button. And then this will give you an overview of the most popular industries in that area. So maybe you're considering opening a business in a certain city um, and you wanna just understand what the most popular industries are there, um, how big the companies are in the area by sales or employee size. And then this will give you a snapshot by location. I had received a phone call uh, through our 1-800 line from a pet store owner in Stanford, Connecticut. And I ended up spending like an hour on the phone with the owner. Um, what we did was they the business was going well for them and they wanted to expand to a second location. So we used our heat map visualization. I'll go back and I'll show you that. And we identified all of the pet stores that were currently in the state of Connecticut. And then we went into our consumer module and we did a heat map of all the pet owners in the state of Connecticut. And we looked at both maps. So we're able to see where there was a high saturation of pet owners but no pet stores anywhere in that area. So we pinpointed all the areas where there was a high saturation of pet owners, but no pet stores in the area. And then I believe he ended up after our call uh, going in and looking at population samples uh, and looking into the communities a little bit more if, if a, a pet store was a viable um, you know, business in that area. Uh, so if I clicked on heat map, and this one won't be too interesting because we're just looking at one you know city one area um, so it's basically like a dot uh, but if you're looking at the whole state of Connecticut and you're looking for just manufacturers making less than a million dollars or you know you, you'll kind of see um, you know hot areas cold areas etc um, so with this 
you can zoom in again, zoom out as far as you need to. Farther you zoom in, they'll start to pinpoint. <laughs> or at least they should. Um, of course, when I'm presenting, it doesn't do that. So now it just shows up like a pimple. Um, but usually there's, there's little pinpoints and you can see a little bit more information about each of the businesses. So I'll talk to our developers after this, and figure out why it's showing up as a pimple. Anyway, um, so that might be how you might wanna do that if you're thinking about opening a physical location for your business. Um, keep in mind the charts and heat map option. If you use a reference solutions database for sales leads generation, um, keep in mind, you can create your own personal account and save your searches. So next time you log into the database, your search will be saved on the home page. Okay. Business portion will always take up most of the presentation um, because it's where most of the information is contained. Uh, before I move on to the consumer and lifestyle application, are there any questions about the business database or how you might use it? Okay, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm slow on the chat box, but I see, what about website? Um, so if you wanted to search for businesses, so I'll open up one more time. I helped like a web developer identify businesses that didn't have a web presence. Um, so on the special selects, you can look for web address. So you can look for only companies with a web address or companies without a web address. So for that web developer, he wanted to find businesses that did not have a web address and he wanted to uh, see if they were interested in uh, paying that, him to uh, create a website for him. And then in the detailed profile, just like the uh, spreadsheet, it'll show their web address. So if you download all that information, you can simply copy paste into your browser and go straight to their website. So oftentimes we won't have all the information you need, but we'll give you enough breadcrumbs to get you started. And web, web address is one of those ways. <clears throat> all right, so I see, um, can you recommend any companies for mail or postcard campaign? Um, I'd actually recommend us. So if you wanted to contract another company to run a mail campaign for you, uh, we are one of the biggest direct mail campaign companies in the United States. Uh, we've got a, a bulk mail discount through Amazing Mail in Phoenix, Arizona. And we've got um, creative artists on standby that can create HTML design for you. And then we've got recommended specs based on the industry that you affiliate with. Um, so if you are interested in doing that, um, reach out to me and I can get you in contact with um, you know, one of our, our mailing consultants. I'll put my information in the chat box. So if you do want to follow up with me after this, feel free to. Okay. Okay, I just sent that to one person. I made a mistake. TJ, I think you might be frozen. Yeah, he is. Okay, so it's not just me. <laughs> oh, it looks like he got booted out. Nope, not just you. <laughs> All right, it looks like he might have lost his internet. So hopefully he rejoins us soon. Thanks.
Here he is. Oh, you're on mute. So, sorry about that. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yep, you're back in business, dude. Uh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the joys of working from home. So uh, my internet is not as good as data axles. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'll, I'll, um, I was just about to show you the consumer module and I think I got kicked out. So thankfully I didn't you know, talk for like 10 more minutes before I found out that I wasn't talking to anyone. Um, okay. All right, can you guys see the consumer module? Yep. Perfect. All right, now we're back in business. I'm gonna take off the uh, transcript, the subtitles. Uh, give me just a second. There we go. Okay, so just like the business database, quick search, advanced search, <clears throat> Quick search, if you're just looking up a person by their name, uh, phone number, you can do a reverse phone lookup, look up an individual, friend or colleague, whatever. The advanced search is where you're going to identify households based on their purchasing behaviors, lifestyle interests, hobbies, household income, home value. So left-hand side, just like the business database where you'll select off on those demographics, now, if we click on lifestyle interests, this will show you all of the purchasing behaviors of those individuals. Now, I wanted to use the meal prep idea um, in my search, but I'm not sure what the right purchasing behavior would be for somebody that would be interested in meal prep. Um, um, you would actually go for... Um... It's not very many meal prep consultants as far as, you know, people going, uh, having somebody come in to, uh, you know, uh, guide them. So you would look for a meal, someone that is actually selling meal preps. Oh. oh, okay. So you would be consulting with businesses rather than households. No, nope, I'm consulting with households. Okay. It's just people, most people want you to um, um, cook for them and, um and then when you run into financial hardships, uh, then you can't afford to do that anymore. And, and although you've been eating healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Do you actually know how to cook that for yourself? So I'm there to say, hey, you may have the money, but you need to know how to do it. Yeah, okay. And how would you go about identifying somebody who might be interested in your service? Is there um, a certain type of household, family, demographic that you do well with? I actually, I haven't um, started just yet, but I have a waiting list already. Okay. Uh, I have no room to offer anybody, anybody else a, um, a meal prep session because um, I'm, the first one that I'm doing, for instance, when I start my YouTube channel is for my sister. She has multiple sclerosis. Her son has ADHD. So um, she's also, she could stand to lose some weight, you know, especially with her being in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, she still works and leads a, uh, healthy, um, well, uh, everyday life, but I'm there to make it better. So I'm there for, you know, to, to, to help you, um, show you how, how to have a more balanced meal to bond with your family. And mm -hmm. I'm also there to help to organize. She wants me to help her, her organize her pantry as well. So I'll go in and do that whole session, which is going to take me two to three weeks. Okay. Um, so I'll make a couple assumptions. Um, so obviously there's a need for it. Um, you've established that with the waiting list. <laughs> so obviously there's a need for it. So that's good. That's, that's, um, if you're, once you go through this, the need, the, the wait list is obviously priority number one, because mm -hmm. you'll want to consult with people who are interested in, uh, your service first and foremost. And uh -huh. then once you go through that process, you can maybe identify a trend. Well, what were most of those families like? Um, you know, you can make a, a guesstimate on, home income or some of the interests that they might have, but a really safe one, uh, if you're looking through our lifestyle interests is identifying people who are interested in health and fitness. So maybe diet and weight loss would uh -huh. be a good start. Yes. Um, 
general health and exercise. Yes. Um, and then I'll leave fitness out of it. So if I think if you ever need to expand your market, you could go into fitness. Uh, you can just assume that those might be healthy eaters as well. Um, uh -huh. I'm into fitness, but I don't eat very healthy. So uh -huh. I, I'm one of those weird anomalies. Uh, you know, I'll I'll uh, I'll work out and then I'll go get Chipotle afterward. You know, so. Uh, oh, so it's, not maybe, yeah. it's not like all these Popeyes. <laughs> so I'll get Popeyes too. You know, but uh, yeah better than Popeyes. Yeah. So we'll start with just diet and weight loss uh, and general health and exercise. And then under geography, um, are you in Branford? Do you, would you uh, consult kind of around where you live or is there a certain area that you're interested in? Um, the My waiting list is from here all the way to uh, Virginia, Atlanta, um, where else? Virginia, Atlanta, and somewhere else. I, um, Florida. Okay. And most of it is in Texas, um, especially since, um, like, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, you're married, correct? I am married. <laughs> okay. So, how many children do you have? I have no kids. Okay, no kids. So it would just be you and your wife. So that would be easy. But let's say you had three children. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to ask you how many. You know, crock pots, air fryers. How many? How many of those do you have? And then I would bring some of my own, and we would all. Everybody would have a station to work at, and everybody would have a job to do. Okay. So after that's done, then I'll show you. We'll sit down and devise a plan on how you stay abreast with your meal preps. You know, mm -hmm. so you have Chipotle in your freezer since you love Chipotle so much. <laughs> Well, if I do meal prep, um, you know, that, that's what I would do. I would be having in my, in my freezer. And I know when we use the crock pot, that'll feed us for a week. Exactly. Yep. Um, so it, it sounds like you've got customers all over. Um, I do. We can identify um, if you've, if you've really hit it off in Texas, um, uh -huh. We can, you know, you saw me do the map-based search earlier. Maybe we do yeah. a, a city slash state search, uh, or yeah. maybe we even do a radius search. Okay. Um, so if we click on radius, and then, oh gosh, you have to have a zip code. Um, How about uh, Houston 77049? Nice, okay, 77049, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so let's look within a 10 mile radius of Houston. Now, keep in mind contacts per household defaults to all per household. If you plan on running a mail campaign, make sure you click one contact per household so you don't send three, four mailers to the same home. It's very important. Okay. Um, so we'll update count, there's 25,716 households interested in diet and weight loss, general health and exercise. Now, our lifestyle interests that we track, we scale individuals from zero to nine. If they fall within that six to nine category, that means they're highly inclined to purchase services related to diet and weight loss or general health and exercise. So with such a large batch, you, you're not gonna need that many. Um, we'll, just, we'll just focus in on diet and weight loss. So we've got 5,760 households, highly inclined to purchase services related to diet and weight loss. It's a great place for you to start. There um, is. You can pick up the phone and call those individuals. Now keep in mind that the individuals that generate on this list may or may not be on the do not call list. So you're taking the risk if you choose to call them. If you get a subscription account number through the Federal Trade Commission, that will make you legally authorized to make telemarketing phone calls to the household level. Uh, we can scrub the list against the do not call list for you and provide you a list of consumers not on the do not call list. Um, otherwise, if you're using our database, it's going to be people that are on it and are not on it. So keep that okay. in mind. There okay. are no legal obligations with direct mail. So you can send a mailer, uh, you know, to anyone. There's, there's no repercussions to that, depending on what's on the mail card. But I mean, as long as it's a <laughs> faithful, uh, you know, business postcard, then there's there's no repercussions to that. Yes, okay. One more thing uh, before I click the results and look at some of these households. So <clears throat> you can overlay it with home income or home value. So if you've identified that, you know, your services 
kind of trend in a certain income range. Let's say that's an annual income of 50,000 to 125,000. And I don't know, I, I'm, I could be way off. I probably am. I'm just, you know, throwing a number out there. Um, Good place to we'll start. Reduce that to 2,174. So you can kind of establish who is most likely to frequent your services um, and then generate that list of individuals. So you'll get a list of names, addresses, and phone numbers. If you're planning on calling them, you can sort this list by clicking on phone. So it'll, uh, you saw a lot of not available. So now you're seeing a list of all phone numbers or you can alphabetize by first or last name. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> same with the business database. You can extract the info by check marking the records and downloading them, exporting it into the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Doing yeah. a heat map or a summary of the individuals. <clears throat> I think our heat map function is just broken. I don't know what's going on with it because it's it's not very helpful. Um, maybe if we zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> Drink water. Yeah, I'm starting to. Um, my wife and I went on vacation a month ago and we came back. We, we both got extremely sick um, for a long time. Um, and I, I feel like I've been over it uh, for a while, but I've had a lingering cough. So, okay. Um, so that's how you might use our database to identify potential customers. It's um, very helpful. Uh, direct mail, uh, calling. Uh, emailing, if you've got the capital, you would have to reach out to us and purchase a list or uh, consult with our email marketing consultants and have a, an email campaign go out to them. Those have additional costs. Picking up the phone is just the value of your time. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Probably gonna have to wrap it up there. I, I can kind of already sense that I'm not gonna be able to speak for, for much longer, but um, are there any other modules that you see here that you might want to look into a little bit further before I do go? And I do, I, I can, I could probably last like five, 10 more minutes. So, but if there's any that you want to see, uh, let me know now. And I can, I'm happy to do a quick walkthrough of, of one of those. No, that's good for now. Thank you. As someone said, it looks easy. Um, it really is. Uh, you know, when I first started working for it was Info Group at the time, um, I went through a, a rigorous training course for two weeks, uh, but they never touched base on the reference solutions platform because we're this teeny tiny department in like a huge company and no one really understands what we do. It's kind of funny when I talk to some of the my coworkers in different departments and they're like, you work with libraries and government agencies and you travel and you, you talk to people, you do programming, like the most of them are just selling lists of, you know, marketing lists and that kind of thing. But one of the training things, they literally just sat me at a computer and they said, click around in the database, you know, for a couple of days before you know it, you'll be an expert. Uh, yeah, not the most sophisticated training session really, uh, but there is truth to it, you know, so click around before you know it, you'll, you'll get a better understanding of how you might want to use a database for yourself. And it is easy to do. But if you do have any questions beyond that, um, my email and my phone number, I, I believe should still be in the chat box, even though I dropped out of the session. Um, so feel free to reach out to me directly if you have any further questions. I don't know awesome. if it made it in the chat, TJ. You might want to just throw it in there again, just to be safe. Okay. I don't see it on my end. I'll charge you unless uh, you're actually, you know, buying something. So don't don't hesitate to reach out. Um, plus, I kind of I, I always find it interesting to see what everyone's doing for their uh, their own business. Um, I find it uh, incredibly interesting. So if you do have any, uh, if you want any help with some of your marketing outreach, just let me know. We'll do. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, thank you, uh, Greg, and, and thank you. I didn't catch your name. 
uh, but thank you for sharing. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you sharing more information about your business. Uh, it does help to use unique examples uh, during these types of presentations. So thank you for sharing. Hopefully that does help you. Um, and then for everyone else, um, you know, hopefully these these examples can kind of uh, help you understand how you might use it for your own business needs. And then, yeah, thank you for the James Blackstone Memorial Library for hosting these programs. Um, I am free any other time to do this, this same kind of event in the future. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. This was very informative for me, too, when I have to answer questions for people. So it was nice to get a tour of the, the service. So thank you so much. I did record this program, so I'll be sending a link around. So if you want to review anything, if you missed part of it, um, I'll be sending that to everybody who registered. So keep an eye out and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, I'll stick around for just a couple more minutes. I see some questions in the chat box, so I'll respond to those in the, uh, but I'll stick around for a little bit longer.